I'm looking at it from an inclusive hiring point of view. I think the recruitment industry could be a real catalyst for change because we are putting shortlists forward and candidates forward and we have some choice in what we can do. Do I think we're doing enough? No, I don't yet. And I think that the reality is we're always worried about the end user customer and whether they won't want us to help them. That what I'm finding is that most end user customers would like that help. So I think we could offer ourselves as catalysts for change. We need to be knowledgeable about what we can do and how to fish in bigger ponds. Um, and there's a lot more to do. Not as well as it thinks it is, because I think it's such an important topic, but a lot of the industry is smaller companies, so less than 15, less than 20, 20 heads. And I think it's something that owners passionately believe in, but it's difficult for them to get to grips with and make a difference in that size of company. For the bigger companies, it's a corporate, it's a board objective, they may even have targets, they may have it as a board reporting mechanism, but for the smaller companies, there's nothing to be held accountable to. So it's something that we really want to get to grips with, but how? How do we make it happen? Actually, I'm just going to hire someone. So I don't think it's as, as good as we'd like it to be, is my honest opinion. The conversation around inclusive hiring has never been louder across the industry, which is really, really promising. Um, I think in terms of our actual, actual ability to turn the dial on making things more accessible, more inclusive, more equitable, is slightly slower. I'm not sure that the recruitment industry fully understands oh, yeah, the benefits of inclusive hiring from a business development perspective, from a expanding your you know talent base, winning, retain business, developing your client services. I'm just not sure that there are many recruitment businesses that are connecting the dots between strategic BDNI inclusive hiring and better business, but more profitable business. I think it's really a story of three camps. We've got some businesses who are really getting it and get the commercial importance of it, as well as the ethicality of it and powering ahead. Some businesses you don't quite get it yet. And all the businesses who are thinking, I know I need to do something, don't quite know yet. So the REC, that's why we're trying to help those businesses as much as we can. I myself am considered a diverse person, you know, mixed race, so I think we, we do recruitment really well is we're skills based in terms of our assessment process, so there's no reference to name, gender, you know, religion, so yeah, absolutely, I think we determine the right fit based on skills and cultural fit rather than anything to do with things that identify that person as a certain group. So in terms of inclusive hiring in, in recruitment, something we're seeing through our, our TR awards program year on year is definitely uh, improvement around that. So recruiters uh, understanding the metrics in their own business to prove their, their own DNI credentials, but we're seeing that a big differentiator for recruiters is how they're actually demonstrating that impact on inclusive recruitment in their clients. That, that really is table stakes is getting your house in order, but actually doing something above and beyond and winning business and differentiating is actually helping your clients to get their house in order as well. And we are seeing that improve year on year. There are pockets of brilliance happening. So that said, there, are, there is some really, really good stuff going on. I mean, I get the privilege of working with those clients who are giving their recruiters the confidence and the tools to change the proven processes. And I think it's maybe once we give recruiters that education, on how to make hiring inclusive, we'll start to see maybe more proactive work and we'll start to candidate the candidate journey, the candidate experience. We'll start to feel and look a lot better. I think there's a real confidence challenge in the industry. Um, you know, we at the REC are running courses now on having conversations, really difficult conversations with your clients on EDI, um, because it takes, people worry about getting things wrong and they worry about how it will be received. And actually, the most important message from everybody that talks about this uh, and is really good at it, is you've got to just take that first step. What's stopping this is being people being open to talking about it and not being scared 
of saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing and just being open and honest about what their perception of diversity is. Um, I think once we get past that boundary and being able to have those conversations, it can flow much easier, things can happen quicker and people can be open to discussion. So I think that's, that's what we need to overcome is people being scared about it. And just taking the, the kind of the fear of the word away and the fact that diversity just means finding the right person for bringing more diversity into that initial candidate pool and that's, all, that's what it's all about. If I look at what would stop us doing more, then I would say it's really that worry that a client won't look at our shortlist. But actually, I don't really think that's a problem. I think it's a received problem that if we offer our services and proactively put mixed shortlists around, I think customers would pay us more money to do that. That looks like an opportunity to me. I think there are various barriers within the recruitment industry to, to uh, as a barrier to their own DNA. I think the first one is is understanding that it's a problem that they need to fix. I think again, most most change in most industries is driven by the customer. So if employers are are really prioritising DNA and they want to see uh, impact through their partners, then 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 recruiters have to adapt to that. What we saw through talent, you know, talent International's benchmark actually a few years ago in employers was that you know one of the top three priorities for employers was DNI. Uh, that dropped down a bit actually post pandemic to being top five, and it was more focused on actually employer brand adoption of technology and making that work in the business. I think we're now seeing more of a leveling out where it's you know it's, it's important to employers and it's important to recruiters as well. But again, re recruiters have actually now got the kind of data and analytics, the access to insight. That, to really help an employer understand you know, where their gaps are and how to fill them, but also to identify the barriers, particularly you know, where it might be around hiring managers or, you know, or proving that there's a, you know, where the, bar you know, the barrier is, to be able to suggest how to overcome that as well. So I think, again, it's still, it's still early days and we're seeing those at the top of the industry really making a difference, uh, but it, it, again, it all comes down to data and how you use it. We are an industry that makes money by placing candidates, right? I think that a lot of equitable hiring is about slowing the process down, is about really thinking about how we recruit and how we make decisions and how candidates access our services and bringing in new interventions and evolving that stuff. This stuff is like, this it takes time, takes more resources, it takes budget. And I think, you know, if you want to have a inclusive hiring practice within your recruitment business, you've got to almost treat it like a change management program, because what we're doing is asking your recruiters to do something very, very different. That can sometimes go, in, go against the grain of what we're here to do, which is hire fast, hire quickly and make more money. So, you know, for me, it's about maybe worrying about resources, not allocating budget, and not bringing in people to support that process. And maybe a focus on more of the external kind of marketing side of it, rather than the actual nuts and bolts of the recruitment process. In the world of work, d and is, is, is a, a headline agenda. But when you're running a business, you're thinking about income, you're thinking about cash, you're thinking about the people you've got. We're not always thinking about how can I be how can I be innovative? How can I change the way this business looks? And the best way about being innovative is by having a diverse workforce. I've seen that with the companies I work alongside, access must see it with the companies that, that they provide to. Innovation comes from diversity. It comes from people first, and the, the most diverse companies are the best ones. So I think sometimes that's, it's that challenge again of getting more people to be thinking about it on a daily basis. I think in terms of what the industry can do better, it's interesting, when I, when I think of the industry, there's, you know, there's, there's everyone that participates in, in the sector, and then there are those at the top of the industry that, are, that represent the industry or, or the voice for the industry. I think if you think about uh, how recruitment compares as an industry to lots of other sectors and how it's regarded, it's a professional services industry, but it's not always perceived like that. There are some people doing amazing things in recruitment and actually you know, uh, you know, leading strategic conversations, not transactional conversations, that are doing a lot around inclusive recruitment to you know, differentiate their service. 
think how they're shouted about and how they're used as examples and how they're championed by the trade bodies needs to step up a bit, I think, as well. And, and, and needs to be a bigger bigger conversation you know, at the top of the industry. Because uh, at the moment, it's probably, it probably is awards that are doing more for that, actually, in, in many ways, than the, than the representatives of the industry. I would like um, the organisations and the people in positions of power, like the Access Group, to be reaching out to its clients and taking advantage of the influence that it has to not only educate, but also to provide the tools to the industry to help businesses do more. I'd like to see the recruitment industry acknowledging how much power it has over equality and to really step up to its responsibility. All right, if we think about it, we place one out of every two roles in the UK. Huge amount of responsibility and power. And if we were to, you know, even improve things by 25%, we would start to see that ripple effect and we would start to see candidates' lived experience improve. We'd start to see less bias, less prejudice, less discrimination. And we'd get access to more people and be able to truly support our clients and help them build high performing teams. I think what I'd like to do better is have more open and honest conversations about diversity and what it actually means and what, what it's about. I think there's a lot of misconception in the messaging, the fact that people think, oh, I have to hire someone diverse. That's not, that's not what the premise is all about. It's about the opportunity and bringing people into that shortlisting process based on their skills, not on what group they're part of, and then taking it through the process to find the right person, not just a diverse person. So I think that's what we need to have a conversation about. And I just need to do it on a bigger volume. I think we should uh, look in the mirror more than we do. I think we'll be better at advising clients if we tackle our own equality, diversity and inclusion. I really encourage uh, recruitment industry businesses to be thinking about their own performance first. And then once they've got their own life jacket on, helping their clients. I'd like diversity to just become part of the everyday way that industry works, rather than it being a thing to address or a topic. I'd just like it to be a bit like Brighton Rock, you know, have it written through the rock, right in the middle of, actually this is what we're about. We're about people, we're about diversity, it's just part of how we, how we run our businesses, rather than it be something that you address every quarter on a webinar, or you address on a report. I'd just like it to become part of the culture. I think there's a few things. One, to be that catalyst for change and to put themselves out there to help end user clients get mixed shortlists being put forward and to move the agenda forward. I think that we could do better internally with regard to recruiting a much more mixed and inclusive environment within the recruitment market for ourselves. I mean, you know, I've been in recruitment for a very long period of time. It wasn't the most welcome environment in the old days for women, let alone any of the other seven protected characteristics. So, yeah, the other six protected characteristics. And I think that we could actually have more companies who have a specific interest in ED&I with perhaps specific areas. I know there are some recruitment companies that place disabled people, others that, that place completely different shortlists. And that's about fishing in different ponds to the ones we've always fished in to find the candidate base. So I think the future's there for us to make a really big difference, and I'm hoping we will.